Americans love taking selfies, and soon we could be using them to shop. We call it Apple Pay. More and more people are turning to mobile apps such as Apple Pay or Venmo, and the big banks are scrambling to adapt. For any payment service to be successful, universal acceptance is critical. Retailers are, are saying to themselves, we have to be able to use that mobile phone to our advantage. They currently have about 22 million people on their app, and if they can get people into their ecosystem to shop through their mobile app to check out faster, everybody wins. In 2016, consumers will use their mobile phones to spend a total of $620 billion. And analysts expect this number to grow to over $1 trillion by 2020. Hoping to capitalize on consumers' preference for convenient transactions, new payment technologies such as peer-to-peer -peer payments, cryptocurrencies, and digital wallets have seen rapid growth. Here to talk more about the future of cashless technology is Shlomi Cohen, the CEO of OTI, a company which hopes to further change the way we pay with wearable payment devices. Now, contactless payments are not a foreign idea to most consumers. Companies like Apple and Samsung have already entered the space with smartphones and smartwatches, and the Starbucks app accounted for more than 20% of their U.S. transactions. What do you think the future holds in terms of mobile and wearable payment technology? Yeah, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, the most important thing regarding uh, the implementation of the wearable is the fact that it's compared to the mobile payment, it's very intuitive. If you're thinking about ring, for example, or bracelet, this is something that we can implement in a very intuitive way compared to the mobile payment. So this is actually one of the catalysts of using wearable technologies in the payment environment. Wearable payment technology has seen some innovative applications. You can even order Pizza Hut with an NFC tattoo. With so many companies pushing innovation of wearable payment technologies, what separates Paynable platform from other products on the market? Excellent. We, we are actually implementing the payment element in uh, different markets and also in different verticals. Uh, the flexibility that we are having with our technology, it's, it's outstanding. Think about the fact that we can put a payment element inside a refillable coffee cup and you can pay with that in the retail. That we can implement uh, our payment element inside the color slip in your sports uh, jacket and you can pay with that and you can op even open the door and you can do any other implementation as well. Uh, the flexibility by implementing the payment element, it's endless. And this is one of the advantages that we are having with our technology. A few drawbacks to mobile wallets are obviously POS compatibility, as well as the threat of hacks and the lack of battery life. Do these issues exist with your Payenable platform? No, actually, when uh, you're looking on our uh, technology design, the, we don't need any energy element inside our uh, wearables. You can use it without battery or any other energy element. We fit to any point of sale environment today in the market. You don't need any propriety uh, elements. It's actually compatible with the existing technology available in the, in the market. On top of it, the payment element that we are actually using today uh, is uh, totally secure, totally encrypted, and this use is actually very intuitive. Since Pay Capsule Flex can be encapsulated in clothing and accessories, tell us about the different applications you envision for this technology. One of the most exciting implementations that we are having with our Flex uh, is in the car industry. We are able to implement the Pay Flex inside the car environment, and on top of the fact that we are implementing a payment environment, we are able also to measure physical parameters from the driver in order to generate alerts, in order to prevent uh, accidents. Since we're talking about putting it in clothing and cups, can you still clean these items using traditional methods? So the, the entire product is actually uh, totally resistant. So uh, when you're looking on the way that we design the technology, uh, you're, it's, it's flexible, it's up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, it's washable, it's water resistant actually. So the way or the places that you can implement the technology is quite wide. 
Just as we saw with Bitcoin, there is a learning curve that can prevent consumers from adopting new payment technologies. How receptive do you think consumers will be to paying with their favorite jacket? When we were thinking on, the, on designing the technology, we want to make it very intuitive. Uh, we, we evaluate the way that uh, customers are actually using uh, payment and the fact that uh, you're doing it uh, many times uh, during the day we want to make sure that it's easy, it's simple, it became to be part of your body. It's very intuitive. Convenience is obviously going to be the incentive for consumers to buy into wearable tech, but what incentive do businesses have to utilize these new platforms? And is it going to require an investment on their end to accept these new forms of payment? Zero invest investment is needed here. Uh, we are actually based our technology on uh, the existing infrastructure that's available in the market and will be available in the future as well. Well, thank you for joining us, Shlomi. We are excited to see where contactless payments are headed.